Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over a evidence-based routine for your skin. It's going to be short and sweet, so let's make a start. Now there are four things you need to build a scientific evidence-based routine. All the products mentioned here are backed by science. First one is a cleanser. The easiest of them all. Pick whichever one you like. It's that simple. Cleanse twice a day. 30 seconds in the morning, 60 seconds in the evening. Next is moisturizer. Now, you can use a moisturizer once or twice daily. If you have oily skin like me, I will use it once. If you have drier skin, you may use it twice a day or multiple times. Moisturizer is great because it helps to protect the skin barrier and gives an added layer of protection. Moisturizer also temporarily makes the skin look younger. Step three, sunscreen. Apply the recommended amount. I've done many videos on this. It's one of the most fundamental things you can do for the health of your skin. It is the least glamorous, the least sexy, and you don't see instant results. But over time, over years, you will thank me for applying sunscreen. Oh, and one more thing. Unless you're out in the sun permanently, you do not need to reapply sunscreen every two hours. If you're in the office, in your home, spending most of the time indoors, once a day application is fine. If you're purposely gonna be in the sun, reapply it every two hours. Retinoids. Now these come in several different categories. You've got a retinol, which tends to be over the counter and is still very beneficial. And then there's the prescription strength retinoids. Now several companies do these, Dermatica, Skin and Me. Just pick and choose whichever is your favorite. There's also another retinoid called Differin, which is a dapline, and this works differently to the standard retinoids. If you find that prescription strength retinoids are irritating to your skin, they are then you may find different a much better option. Last year I did a series of skin peels. I found it very, very difficult to get back into a prescription strength product. So I switched to Differin. I had about a week or so of slightly dry skin, week and a half maybe, and then things were back to normal. Differin or Adapling is much more gentle but will give you the same results. So pick and choose whichever one you want. If you cannot use a retinoid, a prescription strength one, then use a retinol product. All of these things are backed by science. They can definitely improve not only blemishes, blackheads, pigmentation, but wrinkles too. Now that's the only four products you need. There is subcategories of products like exfoliants, AHA, BHA, azelaic acid. All of these things, again, have been backed by science, but none of them can compare to the four products that I just mentioned. It isn't that you should include them, it's that you should focus on the key four and then worry about the rest at a later date. One thing to bear in mind, more doesn't necessarily mean better. So adding in lots of exfoliants and prescription strength products is only gonna permanently irritate your skin. You do not need to be constantly turning over skin cells all day long. They're naturally doing it, you're aiding it, but too much is not a good thing. It will damage your skin barrier and can just make the skin look, well, not that great. That is it, that's a science-based, evidence-based skincare routine. It's really simple. Now, before I go, there's one thing I want to mention. <clears throat> Personally, for myself, I just use skincare. I use Botox in my late 20s and very early 30s. I am now almost 45. I choose not to get Botox, not because I disagree with it, because it doesn't work for my face. So, when I get Botox across the forehead, the only thing that happens is I have a very immobile forehead that looks like glass. It doesn't make me look younger, it just is a very immobile forehead. But the only area I really care about is around the eyes. Now, the way my face is built, that when I smile, I crease around the sides. When I have Botox, that stops. Now, for a lot of people, this skin moves to the inner corners of the nose, creating bunny lines. That doesn't happen to me. Instead, it all goes underneath the eyes. And since I have Mala bags, it's not a pretty look. That's why I don't get Botox. It's that simple. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I've seen lots of before and after photos of people comparing their journeys on retinoids and they will do a two year, five year, 10 year. The issue is if you're having Botox regularly, like most of these people are, you cannot compare the retinoid because you do not know what the retinoid is doing and what the Botox is doing. Just in case you're wondering, there is no cosmetic out there, no skincare out there that can do the same thing that Botox can, or fillers, or Fraxel laser. 
there just isn't. So when you're looking at these videos, please bear it in mind. Now, it's not that skincare can't do great things. You know, I've managed to get to 45 without there being any real visible permanent wrinkles on my face when my skin is at rest. But these will come, they have to. I'm 45 and early, you know, they have to come. And I'm totally okay with that. The goal for me with skincare is not about looking younger, it's about having healthy looking skin, that your skin looks good. What you want is to look great for your age, not younger. That can be a byproduct. But when you start searching for products that will make you look younger and procedures that can make you look younger, that's when sometimes you can end up like a Picasso. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.